you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's a privilege to be here to uh, stand on the House floor with my colleagues uh, this evening and discuss uh, an issue that is facing Americans today that really we should not be standing here talking about. We face tough economic times, uh, but instead uh, we have to be dealing with the uh, administration's rule that he is implementing uh, that uh, came out of the health care bill passed uh, several years ago. This is a freedom of religion issue. This issue is not about birth control. This issue is about government control. And I'd like to share a couple of comments, a couple of uh, uh, lines from our founding documents that I think are very important. I think one thing that uh, has happened over the past couple of years that Americans have uh, become more familiar with our Constitution because I believe the Constitution has the answers for the problems that we face today. And Mr. Speaker, I'd like to share this uh, particular line that was uh, actually influenced the Bill of Rights um, and the First Amendment. All men are equally entitled to the free exercise of religion according to the dictates of their conscience. That, was found, that is found in the Virginia Declaration of Rights. The First Amendment says this, Congress shall make no law respect, respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Mr. Speaker, I come to the floor today and I believe that this is a threat to our freedoms. This ruling has put many Americans, I stand here as a Baptist, along with my colleagues from many different denominations, who believe that this is a threat to our freedom of religion. Could you imagine the outcry if the president told journalists what stories they could write? This is no less appalling. The president's decision to force individuals of faith to violate their conscience is a blatant assault on the First Amendment. One of the things that is so foundational here in America is that we are people of strong convictions. We are people of faith. And what this rule does is it puts the real American safety net at risk. We have so many faith-based organizations, charities, people that organized to help those who are in need. And they are the backbone of the social safety net of this country. And I believe that this rule interferes with those core beliefs and that HHS has jeopardized the mission that so many Americans have to help people across this country. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to share this quote by one of our famous and in, in, uh, well-respected founders and uh, forefathers of our great country, and it is Daniel Webster who said this in, in addressing Americans about preserving the principles of the Constitution. He said, it is hardly too strong to say that the Constitution was made to guard the people against the dangers of good intentions. There are men in all ages who mean to govern well, but they govern. They promise to be good masters but they mean to be masters, end quote. Mr. Speaker, I'd submit to you today that this administration, past Congresses, have good intentions, but they are beginning to control and to rule the people in ways that violate our constitutional freedoms and our liberties. So I want to thank the uh, gentleman for organizing this special order, because I believe that the people must know that this is a rule that will infringe on their First Amendment rights. Last uh, quote I'd like to read tonight is, is a quote from Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson says, all tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. I ask the American people to voice their opinion, to voice their um, freedom, and to let their member of Congress know what this ruling does to the freedom of religion Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'll yield back the rest of my time. I thank the gentleman for his comments. It's now a pleasure on my part to uh, be able to recognize.